back to Affordable Optics and Rifle Reviews. We're at TACOM 2022. And probably one of the most anticipated rifles at TACOM 22, TACOM 2022 is right here and coming from Black Creek Labs. Black Creek Labs has come out with a lot of new rifles for the Canadian industry in the last few years. And they're probably one of the few doing such innovation. And one of the such, that which they didn't show us when we came for our factory tour back in May, was the uh, SRV2 Siberian. Rob, how are you doing? Pretty good, how are you? Pretty good, you loving the show? It's a good show, I'm worn out. You know, this back, booth, knees hurt. This booth, every time I come by, there's like twice as many people, and I'm like, maybe I'll get the interview now. Nope, come back later in a few hours. It's always busy. There's been a ton of interest for this rifle. Can you tell us a bit about the rifle? Yeah, sure. So, um, the SRV2 series um, actually is three rifles. This is the first rifle in that series called the SRV2 Siberian. The Siberian has, um, you know, a slightly different action than the uh, the other two, um, but it's the first one that's coming out to market. Um, so, what we did with this one was really just build a rifle from the ground up that, you know, had decisions of functionality decisions of design, uh, all of those things were kind of, um, you know, complemented by machining, everything else, but then we also have to take into consideration in Canada politics. So there was some political decisions uh, put into the rifle in that, you know, we, for this one specifically, we kind of do have a quasi you know, AR-180 action inside of it, right? And, and and again, that was more of a political decision than anything else, because we did, after many, many years, want to get semi-automatic rifles back out to, um, you know, the Canadian commercial market. So you guys back in the game for the semis. Yeah, yeah, so this is, and this is what we came up with. So um, you probably will notice that the rifle is, you know, fairly sleek, and one of the- Very things, sleek. Yeah, one of the things we did was we wanted to not waste space. Yeah. So we made sure that the rifle was as compact as possible. The action, the internals were compact and we weren't wor wasting any space, which allowed us to come up with a nice, thin, long rifle that also, because of the thickness, uh, we could use a lot of parts, pins, from some of our older rifles that were deemed prohibited. Um, so that's pretty much the gist of it. The, the features on it, you'll notice that on this side we have our kind of standard um, BCL uh, mag release and uh, bolt release button, the, the, the twin package that we've pretty much put on anything, or sorry, on everything. Um, you know, ambi uh, safety, um, kind of, um, let me take it off there. We've got our, our, our uh, our bolt button, our bolt, um, our help bolt me button. out here. What's the, what's a bolt button? Uh, the, the bolt release. Bolt release, <laughs> bolt release and bolt lock. Yeah, whatever it's called. Whatever you want to call it is fine. Yeah. Um, but you'll probably recognize kind of that lower as as very uh, Black Creek-ish. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So it's like almost like a, a slimmed down version of, uh, you know, the 102 Mark 7s. Yeah. Um, so. Um, Did we say non-restricted? I hope we mentioned that in the beginning because this is non-restricted, oh, yeah, non guys. Non-restricted, non-restricted, yeah. So, um, and I should say, I should have started with it. It's actually Canada's newest non-restricted semi-auto on the market. Yeah. Um, so a couple more features. Um, we've got uh, non-reciprocating non uh, charging handle. Um, we've got QD points uh, into the rails. and Integrated. Integrated in the rails. Yeah. and and. Yeah. When you're making a QD point, if you drill a hole directly into aluminum, it's going to end up wearing at one point. So we actually made our QD, QD points out of steel. Steel insert. Yeah. Okay. So steel insert, so it'll never actually wear out, nice. um, and you won't lose your lose your sling. Um, for this rifle, we actually the the butt end of it actually has a pick rail on it, and we put a little adapter in here so we can get the um, the folding Zukov on there. Yeah. Um, and then the barrel is, um, you know, mid-length uh, gas system. Um, it runs uh, like an AR-15 style barrel nut. Okay. Um, so I guess there are some parts here that may be, you know, um, compatible with, with your old AR-15. And of course it, it fires from AR-15 mags. Mags, yeah, perfect. Yeah. So you can run those uh, 10 by 10 cross mags in this rifle. Yeah, yeah. 
So in terms of hand grill, handrails, this one looks really sleek to the receiver. Is this an AR-15 handrail? Is this compatible with AR-15 handrails? Uh, no, it's not compatible. What we wanted to do was um, basically um, have a nice sleek design that looks like it's almost you know one piece and flows. So if we wanted to put an AR uh, compatible rail on there, it wouldn't match up with the receiver very well, and you wouldn't get that you know nice flowing sleek look. Um, but we we did a fairly standard rail with M lock and QD points, so I'm not really sure that you know you're going to find uh, a rail that does any more than this one does. Yeah. And we will make it in different lengths. It pretty much checks all the boxes. Yeah, yeah. yeah and and you know just um, pull that off there. We actually do have like a little bit of a slight cutout here as well for um, you know people with smaller hands, um, and I've been noticing that a lot of people uh, have been talking about how well they can get their hand wrapped around this rail because it does come down a couple, um, uh, I'm looking for a word for dimensions. Yeah, yeah, sure, that's a, that's a, that's a good one. So, yeah. The Siberian isn't the only rifle you guys are introducing at TACOM 2022, is it? No, no it's not. We've actually got um, two other brand new rifles and uh, a pistol as well that we, we've been Let's showing. take a look at those. Okay. So the next rifle we're looking at, what are we looking at, Rob? Um, so here we're looking at what we call the MRX Bronco FSS. Okay. So I know that's a, a mouthful, but basically yep. an MRX Bronco FSS stands for folding safety stock. So um, Black Creek finally has you know a patented design. Um, this is a short rifle. Yeah, yeah, so it's a short rifle. So what we did was we put basically uh, a little um, safety block in our stock. So when the stock closes, um, it blocks the um, safety from going on to fire when the, uh, when the stock is folded. That means the gun is inoperable when the stock is folded. So this uh, isn't going to be like a pistol. That's why this is non-restricted. Yeah, so what happens is, um, you know, the, the, the law for non-restricted is that your bolt action has to be 26 inches long to be non-restricted. Um, the entire right? Yeah, typically that gets, in a folding stock, that gets measured from here to here so this is about 26 inches um, but because this stock uh, makes the gun inoperable when the stock is folded the RCMP has come back to us and said yes you can actually take your 26 inch measurement from here so that makes and this is the first rifle to have basically gotten that uh, designation I'll call it Wow so this is the in fact this is the shortest non-restricted rifle available in Canada Wow so we really designed this as a backpack gun, so a bush gun. So, uh, you know, it breaks down to about 18 and a half inches. Um, you know, you can get that in a backpack, any standard backpack, without a barrel sticking out of the top. Yeah. And if you need to get it out and in action quickly, you know, you're already you're already there, as opposed to you know some of the takedowns where you got to get the barrel back on the gun. Yeah. So shortest non-restricted and. Of course, like every other Black Creek product, Ooh, yes. you know, it's going to accept our 20 round magazine. So, you know, 20 rounds in the gun into a backpack, you really don't need much more than that. You'll need one mag and that's the only mag. Yeah. And then, so our stock, um, you can't adjust it on the fly. However, it does come with spacers so you can get this up and down and the back piece out or in, okay. um, you know, basically adjust it to your face and shoulder uh, and then it just stays like that. Okay. And in terms of caliber selections, what do we have? Um, so we're going to do the um, the first um, caliber out is going to be in uh, 223 Wild. Okay. Um, so we used to chamber most, you know, 223, 556 in 556 NATO. Yeah. Uh, but in 556 NATO, we just found that there is a very small range of commercial off-the-shelf ammo that fires accurately. Mm. So we've recently switched. To 223 Wild, which gives just a greater range of commercial off the shelf that will fire accurately through the through the rifle, and I think people will be amazed at how accurate you can get out of a nine and a half inch barrel. So, what are our expectations in terms of accuracy out of a nine and a half inch barrel? Well, at close range, at a hundred, you're still going to because obviously a nine and a half inch barrel is very stiff. Yeah. So, if you're a good shooter, you're still going to get at least one and a one and a half MOA out of a nine and a half inch. Wow. Barrel. And I would say. So I'm a big fan of, um, I don't like to promote ammo, but I'm a big fan of the Winchester Varmin X 40 grain. Okay. Um, because, you know, um, it just 
it shoots so softly, and consistently we can get one MOA out of almost all of our kind of 5.56 NATO uh, chambers. So okay. it's a great round, and it's it's inexpensive as well. Yes. So 223 Wild, 300 Blackout. The reason we made this barrel in uh, nine and a half inches, we could actually go an inch shorter and still stay non-restricted. We made it in nine and a half because in 300 Blackout, nine and a half inches actually has uh, decent ballistic properties. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. it, so there's it, an advantage to yeah, having yep. an inch longer. Um, and then um, 7.62 by 39 will be the third one we put out. And then we also have a brand new um, 308 action. Ooh. And we are going to drop our 308 action on here uh, with a nine and a half inch barrel. Now we're probably only gonna do 200 of those. Yeah. Um, you know, and we've kind of nicknamed it the howitzer. Uh, <laughs> I bet it gives a fireball. Yeah, it? It, it will be uh, a cannon. <laughs> and um, if you're into flamethrowers, it probably will shoot two feet of flame. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, talking about that rifle, are we able to get one out? Yeah, let's get one. All right. So for rifles, the TRX Bronco. TRX Bronco. So, um, you know, kind of the, the naming of uh, our new lineup of uh, bolt actions is fairly simple. So uh, the, 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 the bison that we've been selling for uh, over a year now, basically the bison is really the name of the chassis type. So that's a monolithic chassis that we've named the bison. So the full name of the bison is the MRX bison if it has the MRX kind of 223 action in it. Yeah. So this action is called the TRX um, and this is our new Bronco chassis. So it's actually the TRX Bronco and then the version that comes with uh, the buffer tube style stock is called the Scout. So the configuration you see here is the TRX Bronco Scout. Okay, now this is a very short uh, bolt action rifle again. This is non-restricted. Yeah, of course, this is this is a, a non-restricted rifle. It is more than 26 inches when collapsed, so um, it falls into that non-restricted category. Uh, typically, the TRX Bronco Scout, we have a 12 and a half inch barrel on this right now, but it also obviously sells with a 16 and a half. And we find that the 16 and a half inch barrel is uh, compact, um, and we kind of really specialize in that that uh, that small compact utility bolt action. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, 16 and a half is great, and you know we could get it out to 18 and a half, but we don't really find there's enough benefit. There's not enough velocity benefit to, you know, go that extra two inches when when we really like that that compact uh, compact size. Okay. Um, so. Um, the 308 action, like I said before, this will this action, you know, will drop into the uh, the Bronco FSS as well. So if you want, you know, that that hand cannon, yep. uh, that flame shooting hand cannon, it'll be in this uh, in this um, uh, action. But also, if you want a nice, you know, one MOA, very cost effective, you know, 308 bolt action gun. Um, you know, this is actually the uh, the pattern. So the expectations for accuracy with this are one MOA? Yep, one MOA. Um, and truthfully, what we've done is, you know, we like to keep our prices on our guns reasonable. Yeah. So we tend to spend more money on the things that are not as interchangeable. So we went all out into the action, right? But if you want to put, you know, a longer match grade, you know, beautiful barrel on it, you're actually going to get a sub MOA gun if you replace that barrel. And we've made the barrel very easy to replace. We use a kind of a standard, you know, barrel nut. So Is um, it the, not that uh, difficult. Savage prefit or are we looking at like a Tika uh, thread in? Or? Yeah, it's a Tika thread in. Okay. Yep. Awesome. Yep. Um, and then as, you know, as all our other bolt action rifles, it takes, um, or we sell it with uh, Remington 700 uh, trigger tech. Ah, so the trigger yes. tech field trigger. Yes. Um, and I guess kind of like one of the unique, um, you know, points about this rifle is that it fires from AR-10 mags. Oh, wow. So if you've got an yeah. old 102 and you've got a whole bunch of AR-10 mags that you can't use, yeah. um, they'll function in this rifle. Awesome. Yep. That's great. So rifles is primarily something that Black Creek is known for, but they brought something else to TACOM 2022. Rob, what are we looking at here? Uh, so here we've got, um, I know it's a long-awaited uh, project, but the uh, the PX-19 Foxbat. So basically the PX-19 Foxbat is a Glock compatible um, pistol with an aluminum frame and uh, steel inserts where the uh, where the slide actually runs on. Um, so I've actually got one of the um, 
one of the frames here. So basically, fully fully aluminum uh, frame, and then we put steel inserts inside of there, um, so the actual the aluminum slide can can run on that. So we've actually improved the mag release button uh, over Glock. So we've got a, an improved uh, mag uh, release button there with a system that won't fail. Um, and then other than that, it's fairly Glock compatible, so you can actually drop your Glock 19 slide, barrel, and trigger into this uh, package. So if you already have a Glock with all the fancy upper, you now can get a fancy lower to really complete yeah. the gun. And what we did with the lower was we really played with the weight of the lower, so we can, we can kind of play with the weight of the steel we use for the inserts, and they're fairly large. And we didn't want it to be too heavy where, you know, you're getting uh, like you're getting more to the weight of like, say, a 1911. Yeah. What we wanted to do was just get it slightly heavier than a polymer frame Glock, which gives you that advantage of, you know, perceived less recoil and faster, you know, second target engagement. Faster follow up. And I, I and I to be honest, most of the people that come in and actually feel the uh, pistol in their hand uh, say it's extremely comfortable. Um, and one of the things we kind of did as well is we knew a lot of Glock shooters don't like that high angle, um, you know, pistol grip. So yeah. we actually kind of straightened that uh, pistol grip out a little bit, put a little more curve in. So it's going to feel just a little bit better on your wrist. And when you punch out, you're, I believe you're going to find that front sight a lot quicker than if you're angled down uh, with that uh, typical Glock. And changing the, the grip angle, sorry to interrupt you, yep. uh, didn't, what about mag compatibility? Did that change anything oh, in regards to mag? Yeah, no, no, no. So it still feeds from, uh, from Glock mag. So you can put a Glock 19 mag is going to fit flush against there and create a little bit of extra space for people with bigger hands, mm -hmm. um, but it'll take Glock 17 mags as well. Perfect. So guys, that's it from Black Creek Labs for TACOM 2022. Rob, this is awesome. You guys came out with so many new, so many innovative products. Even if you didn't tell us when we did the factory tour, mm. they kept some of this hidden from us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, Rob, thanks for doing this interview with yeah, us. Yeah, no, my pleasure. And stay tuned for more TACOM 2022 coverage.